Hello everyone and welcome back to part one. In this video we're going to take a look at setting up the prefab for our potions. We're going to animate our red potion, we're going to set up two scripts which is node and potion, and then I'll talk about how that fits into the wider game. So we're going to start off by creating a folder that I missed last time which is prefabs. Okay the next thing we're going to do is open up our sprites folder, open up our potions, and then in our potions right now Unity thinks of this as one giant picture. We need to split this into individual potions, so I'm going to change this sprite mode to multiple, I'm going to change this to 16 and then I'm going to change it from the filter mode from bilinear to point no filter. We'll then hit apply. Oh and I can also drop this max size down to 256 just because we don't need something that large, that's okay. And then sprite editor. In the sprite editor I'm just going to let it automatically slice. So it will create these white outline boxes but each of these will now become an object and that's what we're looking for. So I'll hit apply. And now if I were to click this little arrow here, you can see that each potion is now a potion. And in fact, I can just click and drag this straight into my scene and I've got my potion here. Now the way we're actually gonna animate this is effectively by changing the sprite and then just going through each of the four sprites that we have here. So it'll look something like this and then reset and then look like that again. And then you've got that for each type of potion. And I'll set this back to being potion zero. So we've got a red potion. And then in window, I'm going to go to animation and I'm going to cl click animation. And then we'll just put this down to on the side. Actually, man, I might drop that down to that bottom panel. And then the easiest way to create animations I've found is just by creating it through the animation pane because it will create both an animator as well as the animation clip that we're looking for. So I'll click create here. We'll go back to our assets, go to animations, and I will call this uh, let's just name it Red Potion. Thankfully we don't actually have a lot of animations in this, it's just a loop, so it's quite basic. So now you'll see it's created our animator on the side here, it's called it Red Potion, and we've got this little window down the bottom. Now this little window down the bottom is effectively a timeline that the animation is going to play over. Right now it's doing 60 samples, uh, which means that you get basically 60 of these frames before you hit a second. I might change that because that's not super useful for me. I'm just going to change that down to 10. If you don't have this little samples here, you can click the three dots here. Oh, sorry, the three dots on this timeline and then click show sample rate. But I'm going to set that just to 10. Okay, so what we're going to do now is click our record button. This will record the actions that we take against this game object and it will record it at the time frame that we're at. So to begin with, I'm happy with it being just as it is. I might go to 0.4 and we'll change the sprite on this to small potions one, which is our second image. And then at 0.6, we'll do two. And then 0.8, we'll do three. And then at one second, we'll just have it loop back to its first sprite. And that's just so it does, it has a while at being on this sprite before it flips back to the first. And now if we unclick that record button and we hit play, you'll see this is effectively what it looks like. So you can see it's sort of going through there and flicking through the different sprites, which is good. We've basically just animated our first image. I might also just drag that over. I kind of like it to feel a little bit like it's faster flicking through it, like the light's shining over it. That looks nice. So we'll keep that and I can flick this animator on. Now we have four other potions other than the red one. I'm not gonna animate all of them on here because it would just take time and you've seen how the process is, it's just repeating it at this point. So you can either take it away and go and do those animations now if you'd like, or I will have the downloadable version at the end of this video where you'll be able to just download with all the animations done. So we're gonna click back onto our project here from our animation pane, go back to assets, and I'm gonna drag this red potion that I've created into my prefabs folder. Now all a prefab is, is effectively a replicatable image. So I can just drag this in and it will have all of the information about my potion. You can see it's got my animator on each one of these now. And if I hit play, you'll see that they all animate like that, which is quite nice. Okay, so I'm gonna delete those ones out of the scene for now. We're gonna work just with this one here and we're gonna start creating our scripts. Now I'm gonna create two scripts here. The first one is gonna be called, oops. Now I'm gonna create two scripts here. The first one is gonna be called potion. And the second one is gonna be called node. Okay, so very quickly, let's talk about how this setup of scripts actually works. Initially, we have a potion. 
potion will have information like what type of potion it is, its current location on the board, and maybe we might handle some movement in there later on as well. Each potion sits inside of a node, and that node will have information about things like is this space on the board usable or not? Because one of the cool features we could do is we could have only some parts of the board able to be filled out, and you've probably seen this in Candy Crush where you can have spaces and gaps. And each node will sit inside of the potion board. And the potion board is effectively a whole collection of nodes. Now let's take this scenario for, as an example. I've got a green, a red, and a blue potion. And let's say I wanted to swap the red and the green potion. Rather than swapping the nodes, I would just swap the reference of the potion inside of the node. And that way I'm able to swap the two nodes around. And that way we aren't moving the actual board pieces around. We're just moving the potions inside of those pieces. This will make a lot of sense when we get through the potion board logic, and there is multiple ways to approach this. We could have the potion and the node be one script, but this is just the way I like handling it. Okay, so back in our game, I'm going to open up potion, and we're going to fill this out with some configuration data. Now to begin with, we aren't going to need any start or update method. We're only going to need some variables. So I will create a public int we'll call x index. So this is the x location on the board, public int for the y index public bool for is matched. We're going to use this later to see if this potion's inside of a match or not. We're going to have a private vector two that I'm just going to call current pos. So that's the current position this is in and a private vector two for target pos. And this is going to be used when we want to move the potion from one location to another location. And to go along with that, we'll have a public bool called is moving. And that will just ensure that we aren't taking actions on a potion while the potion is moving. The last thing that our potion class is going to need is a constructor. And a constructor is just a way to initialize a class and pass in some variables at that point in time. So it will always be public and then the script name, which is potion in this case. And we're going to give it an int for the x location and an int for the y location. And when this gets passed in and created, we basically just want to match this up to our x and y index. So I'm going to say x index is equal to underscore x and y index is equal to underscore y. This just makes it a lot easier when we want to initialize these later on through the potion board. Let's say we've destroyed some potions and we want to insert new potions into the board, you would create them with this constructor. There's one last thing that I think is going to be useful to add. It's not actually another class and it's not inside of potion, but it is a public enum that we're going to call potion type. And we could do this in a number of ways. We could have a reference to like an integer and we could say the red potion is zero, the green potion is one, the blue potion is two and so on and so on. But it gets a bit confusing as your game gets larger. And this is a great way to keep things as readable as possible. So we've got red, we've got blue, we've got purple, we've got green and we've got white. Those are the different types of potions we have. And then on our potion, I'll just give it a public potion type that we've created there, and I'll just call that potion type. And I'll show you how this looks as well in the inspector. So if we go back into our game, let's take our red potion and let's add to it our potion script. And what you can see here is my potion type is effectively just a drop down now. It makes it very, very nice. And when I'm referencing it as well, I can just say potion type dot red, and then I know that I'm dealing with a red potion from then on. That's our potion script done for now. Let's jump into our node. And again, this is quite similar. We don't need a start or an update method. And we're going to be filling in some variables. We're going to start with a public bool that is is usable. So this is uh, to determine whether the space can be filled with potions or not. Uh, it's a little bit of a weird concept, but we'll demonstrate it when we get up to the potion board. It effectively allows us to leave blank spaces in our board if we wanted to create something that's not just a rectangular grid. Then we've got a public game object, and that is going to be our potion. Now this is going to be a reference to the potion that is sitting inside of this node, and there will always only ever be one potion inside of the node. And then again, we want a constructor for this, so we'll create a public node that is going to take in a bool for is usable, and a game object for the potion. And all we're saying is is usable is equal to is usable, and our potion is equal to our potion. And that's all that we need to do for our node script. Now, a lot of this will start to come together quite quickly in the next tutorial. You'll see the actual potion board and then we'll start dealing with matching and, and moving things. But, but this is a necessary part of the configuration that I wanted to just keep separate so that we don't get lost in too much of the potion board at once. Okay guys, that's it for this video. I will see you guys in the next part.
As always, I want to give a shout out to my patrons. In the emerald tier, we have Pat. In the gold tier, we have Raphael. In the silver tier, we have Lanky Moose, Castle Coders, Zoop, and any star above. If you'd like to sign up as well, it's patreon.com slash and I'll see you guys in the next video.